what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about how i flew two people round trip from new york to california and it didn't cost me anything now the intro and the title are a little bit clickbait only because i was one of the two people that flew from new york city to los angeles if you guys have been following me on uh, instagram and things like that you'll know that back in september for my birthday i went to la for about a week um i flew me and one other adult round trip didn't cost me anything and people have been asking me um how i was able to do that how can i continue to do that if i wish uh and also you know just family members, people, even over Thanksgiving break, I've had people ask me, you know, a little bit more about how I did that and a little bit more about credit cards, which is what we're going to be talking about in this video. The most exciting thing ever. Um, it's, I know it's kind of boring, but I'm going to try to make this as um, effortless as possible for you guys. I'm going to just kind of spoon feed you all the information that you need in order to, uh, in order to basically get free flights and things like that. Um, so just for proof right so this is my sapphire reserve card i also have my freedom unlimited and these all have my name on them so like you know that it, these are mine this is my freedom card i have my business unlimited card the business cash card uh we have the amazon prime card as well this is my wells fargo credit card this is my first ever credit card um and then this is the double cash card the city double cash card and then this is actually not a credit card this is the priority pass that you get as a perk with the sapphire reserve um, and on top of that i also have the uh, apple card on my phone so i have about nine credit cards and you know when people hear that um they are shocked they look at me they look at me in horror right because they're like oh my god you have nine credit cards you must have terrible credit you must be bad with credit you must be stupid whatever um and there's a lot of misinformation going around about credit and a lot of people have no idea anything about credit cards loans interest anything like that either because they didn't learn it in school they didn't learn it in college nobody gave them financial advice their parents maybe didn't even know so they didn't tell them um so when people find out i have nine credit cards they're like oh my god that's crazy um when in reality only one of these cards even has any balance on it the rest of them are zero i keep them at zero um i use them occasionally for certain things um and i'm gonna i'll get into that later but yeah, so I've I saw my credit score jump about a hundred points in the over the course of maybe a year, year and a half when I started this credit journey, um, and so I just wanted to you know show you guys that give you a little bit of background about what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to try again to make it somewhat entertaining and and useful for you guys. I know that this is not the typical video that I post on my channel, so if you're finding this video useful, make sure to drop a thumbs up and maybe drop a comment down below, subscribe or whatever, just so that way the YouTube algorithm algorithms know that this video is good now the first thing that I want to do is kind of just give you a little bit of a disclaimer um, obviously we're gonna be talking about in this video um, credit loans everything like that so these are things that are really important for you if not right now but they will be in the future I think probably 90% of you are gonna need credit at some point in your life um, so it, it, these are really things that you should take seriously so bef if you're young or something and you don't know anything about this maybe do a little bit more research bef rather than just my video consult your parents or other people that you know that are well off financially before you make any huge changes or do anything because I don't want you guys to mess up you know if you need a car loan in the future or if you need um, you know a home loan whatever I want you guys to set yourself up for success and again if you are responsible and you do this properly you're going to not only get a ton of um, cash back and ways to fly for free basically but um, you'll also be set up with a better credit score in the future but again that's dependent on you and doing this properly so I just want to put that little disclaimer out there um, and with that being said let's start talking a little bit about the cards that I just showed you so the first thing that I want you to do before you even look at what's on my screen right now is you need to know what your credit is at right now. If you have no idea or you're young or whatever, maybe you don't really have credit. Um, you can download an app called credit karma. I'm not sponsored by them, but it is a free app uh, and it's very useful for checking your credit. Now I know a lot of banks also give you the option to check like your FICO score and stuff like that. But really um, I've found credit karma to be by far the best way to check because it, um, it pulls from two, I believe two of the 
the three big credit bureaus download it so you get an idea of where you're at right now and that'll give you an idea of you know what you can do moving forward so um, the first thing I want to talk about is the two cards that you see on the screen here. What I'm going to tell you in this video is the order with which you should be applying for these cards, assuming that you get approved for them. And, um, we'll talk about a bit about when you should apply for which cards and things like that. But you know, these first cards that I'm showing you here, these are the first two that I want you guys, if you're going to start doing this, these are probably the one of the, you could choose whichever one you want to start with, um, whichever one makes most sense for you basically. But these are the two that you should start with assuming you can get approved and the reason that it's important to do it in the right order is because um chased has a rule and of course you can see these are chase cards a lot of my cards are chase most of them are um and i think chase is the best for doing this there's other ways you could use american express and things like that but i think chase is really the best for sure like i'm i'm definitely biased i've done my research i think chase is the best at the moment so the first thing that we need to talk about is the fact that you should be applying for these cards in a certain order um and the reason for that is uh one of chase's unofficial rules called the chase um five in 24 rule and basically what this says is that um chase chase bank has a rule where you will get automatically declined for a credit card no matter how good your credit is if you've opened five credit accounts within the last 24 months from any bank so this could be applying for any card if i apply for this city double cash card that counts as one even though it's not a chase card so what's important is to get all of the cards that you want and the ones that are going to be most useful for you in doing this first before you hit that limit because once you hit that limit you then have to wait until one of those cards falls off the 5 and 24 in order for you to continue trying again so again five accounts in 24 months that's two years you don't want to wait two years to to finish doing all of this right so hopefully um hopefully when you found this video you haven't applied for any cards within the last two years or maybe only one card or something like that um because that would be best and that would be most useful so this is the reason that it's important to apply for these cards in the correct order and i'm going to be kind of showing you guys that order so the first two cards that i want to sh show you are the two freedom cards so there is the chase freedom unlimited and the chase freedom and these are very different cards people get them confused all the time i see people even at work they they don't they get them wrong um so let me talk about a bit about both of them and i do think that these are the first two you should get you can choose whichever one you want to start with um but just before i jump into that all the links for this stuff is going to be in the description so if you get confused or if you get lost or you want to read more all the links will be in the description but i should be you know you should get 95 percent of the information from this video now just as a disclaimer i'm gonna have links to all of these cards down below and you can apply for them using those links and those links are actually going to be referral links from me so if you found this video useful and you're going to apply to these cards you can use those links and it will get me a little bit of points in in exchange and it doesn't cost you anything it doesn't affect you at all um, but it does help me out as a way of maybe if, if this video helped you then you can go ahead and do that and it would benefit me and anyway, I would really really appreciate that so the difference between the two is that the freedom unlimited is you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. So that means any purchase that you make, no matter where it is, if you're paying with this card, you get 1.5% cash back for that purchase, any purchase, it doesn't matter. Um, and what's important is that this cash back, you know, you might be thinking, well, they're just going to give me money or is it like a discount off the purchase? No, the cash back is in the form of chase ultimate rewards points. And that's the whole purpose of this video is accumulating as many chase ultimate rewards points as possible. So this 1.5% really adds up. Um, if you look across the industry right now, um, the highest that you're going to get is going to be 2% cash back for any purchase. And that's what this city double cash card is. I think there are other cards out there that may be similar. Um, but 1.5% is close to being the best and it's the only one that chase has. So even though, you know, you get, maybe you get 2% for the double cash card, this is a Citibank card. So that 2% cash back is not going to be in the form of ultimate rewards points, which is actually better ultimate rewards points are better for travel than actual just cash back and I'll explain why in a minute 
so the freedom unlimited any purchase you make you get 1.5 percent cash back in the form of ultimate rewards points there's no annual fee which means that you don't have to pay anything to own this card some cards have a fee that you have to pay every year in order to continue being a member of that card this card is free as well as the freedom cards so that's why these are really good cards to start with because you can apply for them if you decide that this is too complicated for you or you don't care anymore you can keep the cards you don't have to pay to keep them it doesn't matter so there's a couple of different benefits um the biggest one is that you get 1.5 percent cash back and also there is a sign on bonus now this is the biggest reason to have so many cards um and basically what a sign on bonus is is that when you apply for the card and you meet the requirements within the first three months you will get a sign on bonus so what the sign on bonus is for both of these cards is you will get two hundred dollars in the form of ultimate rewards points which is equal to twenty thousand points if you spend at least five hundred dollars using this card within three months now that's really easy five hundred dollars is very is a very small amount to spend over the course of three months i mean that's not a lot that's like what 175 dollars per month on the card i'm sure that there are things you could just ba you basically use this card for everything and once you hit that amount then you're go or once you hit the 500 you're going to get the 200 you'll see it on your next statement you'll get it in, in ultimate rewards points you'll log into chase you'll see it there so the cash back offer this, these bonus offers are the reason why you want to apply for so many cards um now the other cool thing is that there's a zero percent interest apr so apr is the amount of interest you're going to pay on the balance that you carry on the card which hopefully it's zero um for 15 months so that means for 15 months you're not going to be charged for using this card right that's over a year so you could literally you know get this card um and put 500 dollars on it and you can leave that 500 there for 15 months and you still won't owe more than 500 which is huge right and now I, again i don't recommend that you should be paying your card down to zero every month so the idea with these cards is that you shouldn't be spending more than you normally would just to get these bonus points right because that's going to hurt your credit um you'll end up maybe paying you won't be able to make the payments so you'll pay late fees things like that so again just to recap um when you're applying for each of these cards you will have a zero percent interest for 15 months which is great you, there's that means there's not really any pressure to pay it off although you should again highly recommend you absolutely should pay these down to zero every month um and as soon as you hit 500 in purchases on each card you'll get 200 so right here is 400 dollars in points or 40,000 points so i talked a little bit about the unlimited the freedom card is the same thing very similar except instead of 1.5 percent cash back you'll get five percent cash back on certain purchases up to 1500 now these um these categories there there's four categories one for each quarter of the year so every three months that category changes and basically some of the categories are like grocery stores so if you anytime you use this card at a grocery store then you'll get five percent cash back which is huge that's a lot right five percent imagine getting five percent off every grocery purchase that you make like that's a lot and it goes up to 1500 so it is capped of course um but some of the categories are like paypal you know if, if you buy anything on paypal using this card you'll get five percent back and they'll email you they'll tell you what the quarters are they change every year um, but there's a couple of basic ones so there's department stores there's paypal uh, grocery stores gas stations usually usually during the summer you get five percent on any gas that you um that you purchase which again that's awesome because in the summer people are traveling a lot they're driving a lot you get five percent back just by using the card any other purchase you get only one percent back so that's where it's good to have both of these cards so basically the strategy is with both freedom cards use your freedom card for everything that would get you five percent five percent cash back so let's say for the quarter it's grocery stores anytime you go to the grocery store you use the freedom card you get five percent back any other purchases that fall outside of that five percent uh, category you're going to use the freedom unlimited because you get more right because the baseline is one percent for this five percent back on categories one percent on everything else this is 1.5 percent back on everything so this is where you can choose like no matter you know when you're making a purchase you can maximize the amount of points that you get back 
so again now with the freedom card there's also no annual fee you get zero percent for 15 months and you also get 200 cash back when you spend 500. so the idea is pick one of these cards apply for it you get it in the mail you use that card until you hit this 500. you you put 500 dollars worth of purchase on that card again pay it off every month um and you'll get 200 back once you get that 200 back apply for the other card and then use that card for every purchase until you hit 500. now with the freedom card you might be saying well shouldn't i only be making purchases to get five percent cash back yes but only after you hit that $500 milestone, right? So I would say use your freedom card for every purchase until you get this 200 and then only use it for the 5% cash back categories. That's my recommendation. Um, but regardless, these are the first two cards that you should be applying for, for many reasons. Again, no annual fee, 0% interest for 15 months. And also, um, these are kind of like the introductory cards for Chase. They're kind of like the lower tier cards. These are the ones that you're most likely to get approved for if you have maybe a lower credit or bad credit or things like that. Now, I do think if, you're, if your credit score is under a 600, about a 600, you might have trouble getting these cards, in which case you should be looking at building up your credit first. And there's tons of videos on YouTube on how to do that. It's not that hard. It doesn't take that long. Um, but these are the ones that you should uh, start with. And if you don't get approved for these, then you probably won't get approved for anything else that we talked about in this video moving forward. So this is step one, apply for these two cards. Now, once you've applied for both these cards, you have both of them and you've, uh, you've gotten the $200 for each. So you'll have 40,000, right? 200 times two is 400 in points terms that's 40,000 ultimate rewards points don't spend those points just let them build up we'll talk about that later the next step would be um either to apply for a sapphire card or apply for one of the two business cards and we're going to talk about the business cards in a second um i'm going to start with the sapphire card right now keep in mind at this point if you if you hadn't applied for any credit cards in the last two years you will have two credit accounts open in the past 24 months because one for the freedom one for the unlimited that's two the next card you should be applying for in my opinion is the one of the sapphire cards now these are the more premium cards for chase these probably require at least a 680 or a 700 credit score to get approved for so you may need to build your credit up a little bit in order to get approved for these cards um, but you can choose one or the other so unlike the freedom where you can get both these cards in this case you can only have one or the other and that's kind of a bummer because that means you can only get one of the sign-on bonuses but if you notice the sign-on bonus is a big bonus compared to the two hundred dollars right two hundred dollars is twenty thousand points the sapphire bonus is fifty thousand points um, for the reserve right now or there's they're actually doing a promotion where you get sixty thousand if you get the preferred so these two cards are very similar they're very very similar the sapphire reserve is the one that i have that's the one that i picked and this is also the best card that chase offers at this point in time uh, in my opinion so basically the different well let's talk about the similarities first both cards um you get a big sign on bonus these are travel cards these cards are best for travel and these are going to be the ones that get you the free flights so for the preferred you get two times points on travel for the reserve you get three times points on travel for the preferred you get two times points on dining at restaurants worldwide for the reserve it's three times so you can see that they're the same bonuses except the reserve is just better you just get more with the reserve um the difference is that um well there's 20 you get 25 percent more points when you redeem them for travel so like let's say you want to buy a flight the flight is a hundred dollars um you don't you only spend 20 you will spend 25 percent less points buying that flight so for example sixty thousand points is worth 750 dollars in travel right so remember two hundred dollars is twenty thousand points so by that logic sixty thousand points should be six hundred dollars but since you get the 25 percent bonus when redeeming for travel like flights it's actually worth 750 so this is really cool because if you look at the reserve it's actually even more than that so the reserve you get 50 percent more which means only 50,000 points 
is equivalent to 750, whereas this is 60. So what's cool is that any points that you could accrue for any of your chase cards can be used on your Sapphire card. So what that means is the 40,000 points that we earned from these two cards, when you get your Sapphire card, you can transfer those points to the Sapphire card and now they're worth more. So that's why I said, don't use them. Don't use them for cash back or anything. You want to transfer them to the Sapphire card and they'll, their value, they'll be more valuable when redeeming, um, for travel. In fact, they're 50% more valuable if you transfer them to the Sapphire reserve. So that's why that's how you're going to get free flights because you're going to build up all your points and then transfer them to the Sapphire card. And it's going to e immediately be worth 50% more just, um, just because you have a card. Now, the other cool thing is that uh, the Sapphire Reserve card will give you $300 of travel credit just every year. You get $300 to spend on travel automatically, which means if your flight is $300 and you pay for it with your Sapphire Reserve card, they will give you back that $300 immediately and you will be charged nothing. The card takes care of it. They pay for it. Chase pays for it up to $300. Now you might be saying, well, I'm not going to fly this year. So this isn't useful. You can use this travel credit for any travel, which means you can use it for Uber. You can use it for Lyft. You can even use it for Uber Eats, which is a little bit of a hack that I've noticed. Um, Uber Eats counts as travel credit for some reason. So you can get $300 worth of free food if you're not going to travel um, just using Uber Eats delivered to your house. So that's useful. Now, the difference between these two cards is that the obviously the sapphire reserve is better but it actually costs more so in order to have the sapphire prefer card you will be charged 95 dollars a year and remember these cards were free you don't pay anything to have these these cards because their bonuses are so good you pay 95 dollars a year just to have the card now if you're using the card actively and you're getting these points and you're redeeming them for travel you're going to be you're going to be making way more than 95 dollars worth of points within a year um, and especially because the sign on bonus, I mean, 60,000, even if you redeemed this as cash, it's $600. So that's six years worth of the annual fee just for hitting the sign on bonus, which is huge. Um, same thing with the Sapphire reserve, except this annual fee is $450. Now, some of you guys may be saying that's insane. I'm not spending $450 a year just for a credit card. And I thought the same thing. However, Remember, you get $300 worth of travel credit for free. So really, if you use this for thing like Uber Eats, like if you're going to order Uber Eats anyway, then really you're only spending $150 to have this card every year. And it doubles the amount that your points are worth for travel. And it also gets you more points on travel purchases, more points on dining, right? So I would suggest pick one of these cards. Obviously you're going to pay a little bit more to have the Sapphire reserve card, but if you're going to travel a lot, um, it's going to be worth it for sure. Um, I mean, just the bone, just the bonus points alone for the sign on bonus more than covers this. And then you just get the $300 for free in travel points or travel credit. So pick whichever one again, unlike the freedom cards, you have to pick one or the other. They don't let you have both because the rewards are just too good. So the idea for this is, and this might be a little bit confusing, this 3% points. So let me explain that. If we look at the freedom card, you get 5% cash back on rotating categories or 1% back on any purchase. Think about this 3x as percent. So really what this is, is 3% back on travel, 3% back on dining. So immediately that's, that's double the freedom unlimited card, right? So at this point, if you get approved for one of these cards, um, use that card until you hit the 4,000 on purchases in three months. Now, you, again, you're only going to get this sign on bonus if you spend 4,000 using that card in the first three months. Um, that might be a lot for some people. If you have really low expenses and you really like save money, that might be a lot for you guys. Um, if you need to hit that minimum, there's other ways that you can hit that minimum spend. Um, there's little loopholes and things like that. I would recommend looking that up on YouTube. There's a really good channel called ask Sebi. He's really thorough with this stuff. So if you don't think you can hit this, watch one of his videos and he'll clarify on easy ways that you can hit that without 
spending a ridiculous amount right and again you want to pay this down you want to pay this card down to zero every single month um this card does not have a zero percent interest for the first 15 months so that means you're going to be accruing interest immediately which means it's crucial that you pay this card off immediately every month otherwise you're going to be you're going to start to get charged to just because you have a balance on the card and that's not the goal the goal is to pay the cards off completely and that will boost your credit score so now there's other perks of these cards um you also obviously you can see you get the priority pass which is this card here i have that uh somewhere in the stack this basically gets you um, access to over a thousand airport airport lounges at different airports around the world. Um, these lounges typically have free drinks, free beverages. Some are even alcoholic. There are also places, quiet places that you can go if you're if you arrive at the airport early. You can hang out there instead of being in the crowded airport. So there's other really cool perk uh, perks of this. No foreign transaction fees. Um, you can transfer your points to hotel loyalty programs. So there's all sorts of you know really good benefits of these cards you also get purchase protection so you can look at this all again i'll put this link in the description below you can look at all the benefits of having one of these cards they're really really useful um, but at this point um, if you followed thus far you should have applied for both of the freedom cards gotten the 200 for each card which is 40,000 points and then applied for one of these two cards and this sign on bonus will change sometimes they have promotions um, usually it's 50,000 each <clears throat> sometimes it's 60 sometimes it's 80,000 you can decide um, whatever it is when you apply but if you apply <clears throat> you spend the four thousand you get the fifty thousand points for the card now at that point you'll have ninety thousand points right 40 from the from the freedoms 50 for the sapphire you also should have no balance on these cards at this point you should have paid them off all the way down um, and also you're probably going to notice your credit score going up at this point because we're probably talking a few months in advance here so with ninety thousand points you can either redeem that for cash which is nine hundred dollars and again this is free cash i mean you know travel aside if you're not going to travel um this is a way to just get nine hundred dollars for free like if you're using these cards to make purchases that you would be buying anyway then you have $900 for free. You can use that for whatever you want. Um, however, if you use that for travel, that's equivalent to 135,000 points or $1,350, which is more than enough for multiple round trip flights to from LA to California, which is across the country, right? That's across the country. Other flights are way cheaper. So that's a lot of points if you're flying solo then you could this is enough points for multiple round trips to different places you can use it whenever right and you're going to continue to accumulate points not just from the sign-up bonuses but just from using the card you'll get five percent for this 1.5 percent for this and you'll get um, points for for the sapphire cards as well now at this point once you've got all the sign-up bonuses you should be using the freedom card for anything that falls under that five percent category for the quarter you should be using your Sapphire card for any dining purchases or any travel purchases. So any Ubers that you take, you should be using the Sapphire card. Any, um, if you're eating out, you should be using the Sapphire card because you're going to get 3%. This is equivalent to 3%, right? Unless, unless the category for that quarter is dining for freedom, then you get five and then you use this, right? So it's really about maximizing the points that you get for each purchases. You're going to be making these purchases regardless. <clears throat> You'd be using your debit card anyway right so instead use this card use one of these cards pay it off at the end of the month and you'll get rewarded for being responsible with credit in the form of points now the next step and again we're at three now we've applied for three cards in 24 months because you can get both three m's and only one of the sapphires and you can pick um at this point you can either apply for the business cards which is what i would recommend or you can apply for the Amazon card. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. First, let's talk about the business cards. The business cards have a similar cash back bonus as the free, uh, as I'm sorry, as the Sapphire card. However, um, it's technically a business card. So the reason that it's better to apply for business cards is because these don't show up on your personal credit history, right? So when you apply for this card, it's not really going to affect your credit score at all. And that doesn't mean you're not responsible for the card. You are. Um, and you might be thinking, well, you know, these sign-on bonuses are really great, but I don't have a business. Um, and I'm here to tell you that you don't need to 
have a storefront or a restaurant or an online business or anything like that, you don't need to have a successful cash generating business in order for you to technically have a business in the eyes of Chase or in the eyes of the government, right? So it's not illegal for you to apply for these cards as a what's called a sole proprietor, which is just you are the own you are the owner and only employee of your business and you also don't even need to be making money for that business in order for it to qualify as a business so you can apply for these cards as a sole proprietor and you basically it's going to ask you like what is your business and you can basically say whatever it is let's say you do photography on the side or maybe you make youtube videos or maybe you own a web a blog or something like that um it could be anything maybe you handcraft uh, hats or something it doesn't matter it, it doesn't really matter what it is there's a business for everything right so if you have a hobby you can claim it's your business basically um, so when you apply they're gonna ask you for your um, employer identification number which you can get if, if you live in the United States you can get that for free from the gov uh, government website basically you just tell the government what your business is you claim that you're a sole proprietor whatever um, and then they give you an employee employer identification number if you don't want to go through that you can just put in your social security number and i think that works fine for me i got an ein for um, my website graystonestrategy.com i don't know if you guys know that i own that but i own that website and um i got an ein i applied for the cards no big deal the government doesn't contact you chase doesn't ask questions um most of the time i think sometimes they do but it's really not a big deal. I mean, worst case scenario, you get declined and it doesn't affect your personal credit because these are business cards. So the reason that you want to apply for these cards, not only because you get the bonus cash back that you can transfer to your personal cards, i.e. the Sapphire card, um, but also they don't go towards the five and 24 rule. So in theory, we have these three cards, right? These two would hit us, would get us to five, right? But it's not that's not the case because these are uh, these are business cards, not personal cards. So as long as you haven't hit this five and twenty four yet, you can apply for both these cards. And if you get both of them, you're still sitting at three because these are business, not personal cards. Now, if you've already hit the five and twenty four, you actually will you will be declined for these business cards. So that's the tricky part. If you're intimidated by these cards, I would say don't be. I would say apply now because if you hit that five, you'll have to wait in order to get these later when you're more comfortable. So my recommendation is apply for them. It's up to you. If you're not comfortable, whatever, you don't have to. But again, they're not really going to ask questions. You can do this. It's fine. You can you can be a sole proprietor. That's legal. Um, and yeah, so basically what these cards are, this is 1.5% cash back for your business, which means um, this is basically the same as the Freedom Unlimited card. You're going to get 1.5% cash back, sorry, for the Business Unlimited card. So I would recommend applying for this card as a sole proprietor, using it until you hit the 300 on purchases in the first three months. So, you know, hit, use it until you hit that 3000, pay it off completely. You'll get the 50,000 bonus points and then transfer those points to your Sapphire Reserve. Next, we can look at the um, business cash card. This is 5% cash back on business categories. So this is uh, office supply stores, internet um, and cable purchases, things like that. You also get 2% back at, at gas station restaurants. That doesn't really matter. Um, again, this is the same thing, 3,000 on purchases, 50,000 points. So in three months, you have to spend a thousand dollars a month, basically on this card, pay it off completely. You get the 50,000 bonus points. Um, and now the cool thing is that you do get 12 months of no interest. So not as good as the 15 for the freedoms, but you do get 12 months of no interest. So that's useful. That's better than the Sapphire cards, even though you're getting the same promotion. Um, and at this point you would get 50,000 points for each, which is a hundred thousand points. So that's, hundred thousand plus the ninety thousand that we got before so that's a hundred ninety thousand plus you can transfer all those points to your sapphire which gets you fifty percent more so at this point if you've applied for all these cards you will still only have three out of 24 and now you have two more cards that you can still apply for before you're locked out of the chase family right i would recommend as your fourth card the amazon prime rewards card um the reason for this is because you get five percent cash back 
on any Amazon.com purchase and any Whole Foods Market purchase. So this is useful for your Prime subscription if you have one. This is useful for anybody who shops on Amazon at all, right? You'll get 5% cash back for anything that you buy on Amazon. And Amazon has everything basically, right? Like if let's say you run low on paper towels, you order it from Amazon, you get 5% cash back. So you can use this card to maximize the amount of points that you're getting. Um, because let's say, you know, you let's use the, the paper towels for an example, right? Let's say, um, you need paper towels and it, you can't buy them anywhere that would get you 5% cash back for the quarter. You obviously won't get the 3% cash back for the Sapphire cause that's only dining and travel. Um, so you would normally get 1%, 1.5% cash back cause you would default to the freedom unlimited card, right? However, if you buy them on Amazon, now you get 5% back. So this is kind of like, you know, you can use Amazon as a way to make purchases and try to uh, try to avoid using the Freedom Unlimited card, right? Try to avoid the 1.5. You want to get 5% as often as possible. So might as well use Amazon to do that, right? You can pay for your Prime subscription, get 5% cash back, uh, and then you get 5% back for everything that you buy on Amazon, and you'll get two-day shipping for most of it, right? If it's on if it's on Prime, you get 2% uh, two-day shipping for free for everything. And you're also going to use it at Whole Foods. If you shop at Whole Foods, that's just another bonus, right? So this would be my recommended fourth card for a majority of people. Obviously, if you don't ever use Amazon, you don't like Amazon, then don't get this card um, because there's no sign-on bonus, right? The other cards, even if you don't ever use them again, they have a sign-on bonus, which is really valuable, right? I mean, we got 190,000 points just from those cards alone. Uh, and that's a ton of points. Like if I do the math, 190, oops, if we do 190,000 times, if you get 50% extra, um, that's 285,000 points, uh, in, in point in, in, on your travel, right. For travel, which is $2,850, right? So you got that for free just for making purchases that you were going to make autom automatically. Um, and now that's multiple, that's tons of flights. If you, depending on where you're going, of course, if, if you're flying first class across the, across the globe, maybe that's only one or two flights. Um, but for most people, that's going to be multiple flights unless you're paying for a family or a significant other or whatever. Um, but yeah, fourth card, I recommend the Amazon prime card. Fifth card is up to you. Um, I will, again, I will post, um, a link in the description that will tell you all the cards that are under the five and 24 rule. And some of the other cards that earn you ultimate rewards points, because again, the ultimate rewards points are the way that you're able to get more for travel travel. So you could apply for Southwest West cards, whatever cards basically get you more um, points. It's best to get the ones that have sign on bonuses first. And then, you know, after that, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you're able to apply for all these cards, you're going to have tons of, you're going to have thousands of dollars worth of free flights that you can take, or you can even use it for hotels and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I do think you get a better deal on flights than you do hotels because hotel chains have their own, uh, loyalty programs. And those are usually a little bit better, which you can transfer the points to the loyalty programs, which is what, um, this says here one-to-one -one point transfer for leading airline and hotel loyalty program. So you get benefit of those as well, which is why this is actually a better card than it's a better travel card than any specific airline card or specific hotel card, like the Marriott card or the Hyatt card or the jet blue card or American air, whatever the Sapphire reserve is actually better than them because you can transfer the, the points <clears throat> to those programs automatically. So this is the, how I was able to get my free flights. Um, and again, if you don't travel, you can just use that as money, but keep in mind, you're going to be paying 450 for this card or 95 for this card. So just make sure that it makes sense to do this. If you're not going to be traveling, um, if you're not going to be traveling, maybe just get these two and then the business cards, whatever you want. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Now, again, I've mentioned before that you should be paying the cards off completely every single month, because that's how you're going to, um, actually get, good credit moving forward and better credit means you're going to get a plot. You're going to be more likely to get approved for some of the higher tier cards. <clears throat> um, but with that being said, uh, you also should be using the cards regularly and you also shouldn't cancel any of the cards. Um, and maybe I'll make a separate video for that, uh, and, and why you should never cancel a credit card and you should still use it maybe once every six months or something like that. Um, for example, uh, if you don't use a card for a certain amount of time, they close it automatically, which is really bad for your credit. <clears throat> so for example, I think my, 
Spotify subscription is on my city double cash card and that's it every month it gets charged 10 bucks and every month I have it auto pay 10 bucks so that keeps the card alive so it never closes and um, I don't have to use it ever again right I can just use the cards that are gonna maximize my points so <clears throat> that's a really long video um, hopefully this cleared things up for you guys if you have any specific questions I would recommend joining my discord link in the description below that's the best way to reach me at this point because a lot of people have been reaching out to me over DMS on Instagram and Twitter and a lot of times it gets put in the spam folder automatically and I don't see it for a month or two so if you want to talk to me directly it's best to join my discord um, also follow me on social media all the links are in the description below you can also comment down below if you have any questions I'll be sure to answer those as well um, and if you know if I get enough questions maybe I'll make a follow-up video um, to this one and that's pretty much it but yeah that's how I was able to fly two people from New York to LA for free it didn't cost me anything and I can I have enough points right now just sitting there where I could do it again if I wanted to so with that being said guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe comment down below and I will talk to you guys again soon peace